This is your macroeconomic video on supply shocks. A supply shock is just a shift in short run aggregate supply. It is generally a really big shift, something shocking that happens, and it can be either a positive or negative shock. Positive supply shocks shift supply to the right and negative ones shift it to the left. A negative supply shock leads to what's called stagflation because when supply shifts to the left, price levels or inflation go up and we also have decreased output which means higher levels of unemployment these are two really bad things to happen at the same time if we have higher prices and less people working um, that is two difficult problems and you can't solve them both at the same time this is what's happening to the united states economy in the 1970s because of disruptions to oil supplies around the world, the US couldn't purchase the amount of oil they needed to refine it into gasoline, and it created a really large stagflation problem, which of course was a really bad recession. A stagflation recession, because it has both an unemployment problem and an inflation problem, is very, very difficult to solve quickly. So as an example here, if something like an oil crisis happens and oil prices rise, remember oil is an input that we use to make gasoline, so this would shift supply to the left. When supply shifts to the left, we get stagflation. Here at our second equilibrium point that I have labeled point B, we have price inflation rising and real GDP or output dropping, which also means that we have less people working. So that's really bad. For our second shift, um, we've got two problems, less people working and higher prices of bills and food that you need to pay for your family. So there's no really good way to fix this because um, any way we try to fix it, um, the problem's gonna persist for a decent amount of time. All right, so here are the options. We can just do a free market option here and just wait for supply to shift back to the right. That means we just kind of wait out the inflation and unemployment problem until businesses decide to hire back their workers, pay them at you know a different rate, and produce more goods and services. That would shift this whole supply two back to supply one. Now, that's going to be a long time coming because right now they're paying... Um, you know, stagflation's happening, people are in a recession, buyers are not buying their goods and services. So businesses are gonna take a long time before they decide to start hiring people back and producing goods. The other thing that you can do is have the government intervene. And of course, Congress or the central bank of a country can intervene in order to try to stimulate the economy by some type of spending package. And typically, because members of Congress are publicly elected in elections, which happen in the short run, they generally want to try to solve recessions because voters um, during a recession generally don't want to vote for people again. So Congress decides that they are going to pass a big bailout package and let's say give either businesses or people money. If you give people money, that is going to shift the aggregate demand line. In this case, aggregate demand would shift to the right. Um, if we shift it to the right, we have a new equilibrium that would be at an even higher price level. So here I have aggregate demand shifting. That's my third line. It equals up with price level three. Now you'll notice that my horizontal axis, real GDP, went back to YN. But in the meantime, we made the inflation problem even worse. So if Congress intervenes, they can fix the unemployment problem, but the other problem, inflation, has gotten worse. Congress could also do something different by you know, uh, decreasing the amount of spending in the economy. So they could decide to do something like raise taxes. That would shift aggregate demand to the left instead which of course would make unemployment even worse, but price levels would go back down. So whatever Congress does with the bill that they pass, or if the central bank wanted to use the interest rate to make these changes, they're only solving one of the two stagflation problems and the other one's getting worse. So the question becomes, 
the free market will solve these problems. It just might take a really long time to get out of the recession. But if we decide in the short run to use Congress or the central bank to fix the problem for us, it only fixes one of the problems and the other problem gets worse. So that, those are kind of the pros and cons as to how we fix uh, short run problematic stagflation recessions.